Um, so stay tuned and we will be back with you soon. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. If you're in the U.S., good evening to you. Um, at the outset, I want to um, wish you all a very, very happy new year in 2018. Um, this is the first uh, Ruckus Live webinar that the Asia-Pacific team is hosting for 2018, so welcome to 2018 again. Um, in the first of this webinar, we're going to today talk about uh, the smart campus and the opportunity it represents uh, for us in Asia. Uh, to talk about it, I'd like to introduce Rich, Richard Nedwich, uh, the Global Director of Education for Rutgers globally, um, and he's going to talk about the smart campus um, today. So with that, I would like to pass the mic on to Rich. Rich, over to you. Thank you, Arvind. Appreciate it. And Glad to be here on the first webinar of the new year, so very auspicious. Um, and with, I think, a strong agenda to help you all reach out into higher education markets uh, this coming year with some, some good new messages and conversations that we can have together with, with our customers. Um, as you'll recall, over the last year, we've been talking about elevating the student experience by providing a home away from home experience and easy or hassle-free access to devices and applications and the internet in order to create engaged students in campus life because those types of students tend to be more successful and retain at school. However, we've noticed trends in the market, a shift that is starting to happen, changing expectations and so on, and that's really what we want to start addressing. So this year, we launched a new message and a new solution, and this came out uh, in November of 2017, and I want to make sure we all understand what that new message is and how, it's, how it really builds on what we've started and what you may have deployed with existing customers and may hope to deploy with future ones. So we'll introduce this concept of a smart campus and what its benefits and applications uh, may look like, and then I'll provide you a quick marketing update as to what Ruckus Marketing is doing to support you in your campaigns and your outreach um, to your prospective customers and existing customers. And then just a few highlights from EDUCAUSE 2017. This was um, in November of 2017. This is the largest educate, higher education IT show in North America, attracting some 9,000 IT professionals worldwide. So with that, let's jump in. So who knows what a smart city is? Well, a smart city, it links devices, applications, and people to enable and even enhance city services while driving new operational efficiencies. Ultimately, the hope is to attract citizens and businesses to the city and increase the reputation uh, of the city in the process. So to accomplish this, the CIO and their staff will typically establish broadband municipal Wi-Fi and add Internet of Things or IoT infrastructure, which connects the city's physical infrastructure to their network infrastructure. The reasons for doing this are many and include public safety, convenience or lifestyle like parking and transit, or the efficient delivery of utilities such as lighting and water. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, who knows what a smart home is? Well, a smart home similarly also connects devices, applications, and people to enable new services and efficiencies as well. So using a Wi-Fi network primarily, a smart home puts the user in charge of home services like streaming, video entertainment, gaming, music, and so on. But it also provides home automation like lighting, uh, window treatments, heating and cooling. And finally, you may have seen 
uh, Nest thermostats from Google or Ring video doorbells. Um, basically, home safety is now enhanced with such innovations as these, like motion detecting video cameras, uh, Wi-Fi enabled locks, connected alarms. And if that's not enough, now the automation is being tied into artificial intelligence or AI digital assistants like Amazon Alexa and Google Home. So smart homes are new and they're changing the expectations of the people in the homes, including high school students who are looking for prospective universities and colleges, colleges to attend. Now, several years ago in the US, higher education saw uh, very good times with very high enrollment, very high student retention because the economy wasn't very good. Jobs were hard to find. Graduating students found it, it was best to, um, to go to college or university because there were no jobs immediately. And if they were in college or university to stay there uh, in hopes the economy would recover by the time they graduate. Well, today the economy in the US is much stronger, it's improved, and the unemployment rate is near an all time low. So as more students and graduates enter the workforce, college enrollment levels have dropped. Right, so they're no longer seeking directly to go to college or feel they need to stay there longer when they, there are more jobs to be had. In fact, a recent uh, U.S. survey indicated only 34% of U.S. institutions are meeting their enrollment goals. So how are colleges and universities competing for digital natives? And by the way, I'm bringing these statistics because I have them, but the reality is as I've traveled uh, across APAC and across EMEA over the last year, I've heard these same stories all over. I heard it in Dubai, I heard it in uh, Australia and New Zealand. Um, so while the statistics may be slightly varied depending on your region, these global trends are not, right? Colleges and universities are competing for digital natives. With students questioning even the value of a college degree these days, it's become a lifestyle arms race to create a home away from home experience which suits their digital native lifestyle. They still want very fast Wi-Fi connections and uh, easy access to all their applications and devices. But their expectations have changed because of smart homes and even smart cities. So at home, students and their families can automate and control their homes with an app on a smartphone or on a computer. They can see who's at the door. They can unlock the door just from their app. They can turn on, on, on and off the lights, turn on and off the air conditioner or the heater. They can stream Netflix on the living room TV. They can play streaming video games in another room while mom and dad are working on their laptops in their home office. Oh, and they can measure and reduce energy use as well. Um, if you haven't seen it already, I'd recommend you look at our Lennar Homes video case study on smart homes. It's very, very interesting and very fun to watch. Now in cities, people are using wayfinding digital signage um, to find available parking, check traffic conditions, or when is even the next bus arriving at this stop. Uh, street lights are coming on when you approach and turning off as you leave. Um, or you can even measure home utility use without anyone coming out to read a meter anymore. All this is enabled by putting your home infrastructure and things on a fast and reliable home network, or by a city by putting its infrastructure and assets on a fast and reliable municipal network. And for example, you can see the City of San Jose video case study. So now enter the smart campus. So what exactly makes a campus smart? At the highest level, a smart campus links devices, applications, and people to deliver two key value propositions. One, they're enabling new experiences or services to their campus community, especially the students. And two, they're improving operational efficiency, doing more for less money, lowering energy use, going green, whatever you like to call it. Just like, a smart city, just like a smart city. In fact, in many ways, a campus is like a city unto itself. So a smart campus starts with reliable wired and wireless connectivity everywhere, indoors and out. And while today that is still a goal for many colleges and universities, it's really just the beginning for a smart campus. When all the people, devices, and applications on a campus can share a common technology infrastructure, then they can interact with each other to enable new experiences and efficiencies that just weren't possible before. So let's take a look at the segmentation or the taxonomy of a smart campus and dig just a little bit deeper. So this presentation was provided by Future Source Research based out of the UK. And they saw this as sort of the early adopter use cases for smart campus. And what you see here is 
building automation, smart lighting, physical security, and smart payment systems as the initial pillars uh, or starting projects in a smart campus uh, environment. All of this enabled through the existing access point switches and cloud networks available to the campus today, where information gathered from nodes and sensors, pass through connectivity technologies like motion sensors, light sensors, video cameras, and so on, are passed through some sort of gateway um, and up through a, to the cloud to a cloud service, which can then perform some level of analytics. You've all seen like IBM Watson, for example, is an example of cloud analytics engine that can provide data or insight back to the campus and tell them something interesting about what's going on that can enable a new service or uh, achieve a new efficiency. So cloud networking, already there today. We have our own cloud offering, but in general, cloud networking is available to your customers. It's not as extremely popular in higher ed as in some other vertical markets, but it is gaining attention. Building automation, also gaining attention. The idea here is that you can manage a number of different aspects like heating, air conditioning, ventilation, safety, these systems can intelligently optimize energy use and create very significant savings for um, an educational institution that adopts them. These systems are typically expensive and proprietary and of a closed nature and can take several years to see some significant return. However, using IoT technologies and cloud-based systems can help uh, improve that return a little faster. Smart lighting is probably the number one deployed solution for a smart campus today. Because the return on investment is so straightforward as to use less energy from outdoor and indoor lights, um, it's relatively straightforward to deploy. Uh, it's easy to see that it's working or not working. So for a number of reasons, um, this is a very popular topic. And as a reseller, this is an area I'd be looking at. Um, like building automation systems, smart lighting allow you to optimize that energy consumption. It allows you to do interesting things like, you know, is the light on or off? Can I manage uh, to dim the lights? Can I change the color of the lights, right? So once you connect this to a network, there's a lot of interesting things you can do. From a security or physical security perspective, uh, traditional security systems are very popular already on many educational institutions, but often these are siloed. So you've got access control systems safety and intrusion alarms, video surveillance. But as I say, often these are bought independently and run independently. The opportunity here is to start combining these and connecting these through a network and through a single management that's going to allow for interesting new use cases to make the campus even safer and run more efficiently and provide more insights back to the campus. And finally, smart payments. Smart payments allow cashless operation within the institution and reduce the burden of collecting and reconciling physical money. Again, traditionally, these are closed loop systems. This could be uh, something like uh, an ID card with an embedded RFID uh, chip in it. The idea here is that the student can use this card to pay for meals, pay for books, use a vending machine, et cetera. But by combining it with other systems, you can enable new capabilities like use your card to vote on something on campus, um, use it for uh, physical access to rooms in certain buildings, et cetera. So there's a lot of new things coming from smart payments and those are gaining in popularity as well. All right, now if I look at that gray box area I showed you, that's really what I was describing before as the Internet of Things infrastructure. Uh, a lot of ecosystem partner uh, equipment here, sensors, cameras, lights, locks, and things that I mentioned earlier. Um, and then end-user applications that take advantage of that infrastructure. And I'm going to show some of these in the slides coming up. So what this says is today's campuses are deploying, you know, uh, access points, switches, cloud networking, uh, analytics, management, um, security solutions already, right? That is a good goal, but it's really creating a baseline into which at some point an IoT infrastructure can be added to turn these campuses into smart campuses. Now the benefit of doing that, there are many, I'm going to focus on a few here, smart living, smart learning, and smart security. And I'll tell you what I, I think about each of these in a moment. Underpinning all of these is the idea that you could be providing as campus IT, building automation and operational efficiencies um, at the same time. And I'm pointing this out because um, 
as I talk to universities and colleges and I read the industry press and I talk to other pundits and experts, uh, it's clear there's a lot of focus on that operational efficiency side, that going to a smart campus is going to allow us to run more lean and uh, save electricity and go green. And that's all good and worthwhile. But I believe there's so much more that can be accomplished, and I think that's the message that we want to tell as well. All right. So smart living. I'm not going to read this to you. you as you heard from Arvind, these, these slides, this presentation will be made available to you afterwards. Um, what's important here is that there are many applications. The idea is the student is going to have the tools and the applications available to them to suit their digital lifestyle to allow them to do the things they want to do, like have their own personal network where they just see their own printer, just see their own devices, uh, their own personal VLAN. Um, similar to being at home, I don't see all my neighbor's devices uh, on a network and I don't want them to see mine, so there's a certain amount of uh, privacy here. IPTV, most students today, I know my own children are 13 years old, um, most of the time they're not watching TV, they're on their phones, they're on a computer, they're watching YouTube, they're watching Netflix, they're watching Instagram videos, they're online doing IPTV activity. And they want to have that when they get to college or university. Many do because they like the freedom, the flexibility of watching what they want, when they want, where they want, on whatever device they want. And IPTV can do that. Um, but other applications are going to allow the student to be very efficient in how they spend their day on campus. They're very busy, they're overworked, they have so much to learn in a day. They also have recreational goals such as fitness and uh, uh, expanded learning and social goals to meet with their friends. And so having things like smart parking, smart transit, wayfinding help them be more efficient in their use of time on campus. In building LTE says I want that same connectivity even in buildings that don't have good Wi-Fi coverage or, or even if they have good Wi-Fi coverage if I want cellular services like to be able to call my parents or be able to receive emergency notifications I can still have that as well. That's probably emerging first in the U.S. and then moving to other markets. All right, smart learning. This says that while it's great to suit the digital uh, native lifestyle this is a place of learning and how can we leverage all this infrastructure we're putting in place to improve the learning itself on campus. And that can happen as well. Again, most other vendors aren't talking this side of it, we are. There's a number of things that can happen as you can see here. Uh, flexible learning spaces says I'm using mobile learning, mobile teaching to just change and transform learning spaces themselves. Um, that's a very hot topic in education. Um, Virtual labs, this is an interesting one. So traditionally, campuses, if they needed to offer uh, supercomputing resources to students to do their research, they would offer lab spaces where they could come in and use, sign up for and use uh, uh, very high power computing resources, network storage and memory, et cetera. Well, today we have things in the cloud. And you can spin up those resources in a cloud instance for maybe two, three US dollars per hour per student much more efficient than having to buy very expensive workstations and dedicate them and then have to update them and maintain them, et cetera. So repurpose the space, don't spend the capital money, allow the students to have um, uh, high-end research applications available to them on a traditional laptop. So very popular as well. Using distance uh, learning and lecture capture says I can learn from my professor or even a professor at another school online. So that's another innovation to improve learning uh, through the use of networks on campus. And then I'm going to talk in a little bit about leveraging the data that you're going to capture on IoT as another way of transforming smart learning, but I'll get to that in a moment. Smart security, again, security systems are very popular. Um, and available on many campuses today, but how can we combine this to do something more interesting? Uh, video surveillance, uh, not only can we take video surveillance uh, camera technology and move it to your network and make it IP-based, but you could potentially backhaul it off of your wireless LAN or other network uh, technology so that you don't need a dedicated ne uh, uh, overlay network for your CCTV or your uh, HD IP video anymore. You can run your surveillance cameras off of your network, potentially putting them on the same poles where you're putting your smart lighting. So this is an exciting area where you're putting potentially outdoor APs, 
smart LED lighting, surveillance cameras, all on these same poles and deploying them around campus. And I'll show you what that might look like um, in a little bit. Smart locks, this is the idea of Wi-Fi based locks. They're at home. Uh, many higher ed campuses in the U.S. have already started um, deploying or exploring deployment of these as requested by their facilities departments to be more efficient. Um, it's easier for them to change lock codes electronically than to physically change locks and reallocate them as the students keep coming and leaving and coming and leaving. Um, asset tracking also popular. Um, you can do this through any number of different ways. Mobile devices can be tracked, but also beacons can be placed on high value assets such as projectors, um, uh, lab equipment for students, bicycles, backpacks, et cetera. Tracking people, well, we don't really mean track exactly where every student is. We don't think that's acceptable necessarily. Um, but it is important to know when you have guests for an event where they're going. Can we analyze uh, footfall analytics, get an idea of where people are on campus, when they're on campus? Can we account for people during an emergency, whether that's a, a natural disaster or a man-made act? Uh, where is everybody? because if we have an emergency response, they're going to want to know, is everyone safe? So a number of different things to look at here. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the apps. Um, I talked about smart living before. One of the um, exciting new partners that we've started working with here in the US is called uh, City Life. Um, they just won the pitch prize at Educause uh, for having the best new idea. In fact, they won a $10,000 investment from Educause for their great idea. And their idea was to build smart campuses to transform how students live, work, and play. Well, you can see here already their map, their language, uh, their description is very similar to our own. And it's what drew us together and it's uh, part of what's driving our, our budding or starting relationship. Their apps include things like a smart scheduler for students to keep track of their day, both for academic as well as recreational activity. Um, very handy for time-starved, very stressed digital students who need to keep track of many different things throughout the day. Um, they can also find things on campus, find their friends, uh, find their bicycle, find their backpack. Basically, they can tag the things they care about and find it all in the same app. And one of the most compelling apps, which is really interesting, um, you probably can't see it on this slide very well, but it says on the map there, availability of gym. And the idea here is um, current research indicates that students who make use of athletic facilities on campus uh, to stay fit, uh, sort of the sound body, sound mind belief. But it is proven that these students tend to do better. They have better mental outlook, less stress. Um, and so campuses care whether the students are taking advantage of uh, the gym or athletic facilities on campus. What City Life has done is used IoT infrastructure in the form of tags and gateways to tag um, uh, treadmills and uh, other gym equipment that's put in these facilities, exercise bicycles, et cetera, and made them visible on a map on their phones. So now they can say, I, I feel like working out, but I don't know if the equipment that I want to use is available. I don't want to walk 20 minutes across campus just to find out it's not available and then walk back to my uh, residence and get changed again back to my, day, you know, to my street clothes. It's too much time to waste. Using this app, they can take a look to see if the equipment's available. It's very much looks like booking a, a seat on an airplane where you look at an airplane map and you can see which seats um, are currently available to choose from. The same way you can say, oh, I see that there's uh, 10 exercise bikes available. I'm going to quick run over and see if I can hop on one. That has a 90% approval rating for that app from the students where it's deployed so far, so very popular. This is a really good example of improving or elevating the student experience using smart technology on a smart campus enabled through IoT infrastructure residing over a wired wireless network. All right, now let's talk about smart learning. And there's a couple different aspects to this. So there's another app from City Life for this one I'll just mention quickly. They can form study groups. So knowing something about the students reveals who's in what class and what grade level they're in. So you can quickly say, who would like to meet at the library Tuesday, 7 o'clock, uh, to study calculus? 
and form study groups this way. And it's important because it allows students to engage each other in campus living and campus life rather than be isolated because it's, again, proven that those students tend to be more successful. So allowing them to self-form their own study groups is extremely helpful. Now, there's a couple different ways of using data on campus to enhance learning. One of them I put up here on, the, on this little map says, can we collect campus data using IoT infrastructure and use it for learning? So for example, if we're using IoT sensors to measure uh, traffic and parking availability every day, um, to measure lighting use and electricity use, to measure air quality, water use, whatever it may be, gather that data, make it available um, as digital objects or for uh, building learning curriculum. And the idea here is, a uh, professor can use that data to make projects much more relevant and interesting to the students. So rather than just have a theory or an example problem that may not mean anything or cause very much interest or engagement in the students, now a professor could challenge the students to say, how can we reduce the time it takes to park a car on campus from 22 minutes to 15 minutes? That's going to be your semester two project, you'll be forming work teams, the data will be available on the server, use your virtual labs, go, right? And now, not only is it an interesting problem, but it is a relevant problem because in solving this problem, you're improving life on campus. So you're using the data from the campus to engage students and ultimately improve life on campus. It's very interesting what can be done here. Now there's an example of this. In fact, it's in APAC. This is Western Sydney University. Um, when we discussed Smart Campus with Terry Holling, the CIO, his response was, Smart City? We have a smart forest. And I said, what's a smart forest? Uh, and he explained it to me, and I blogged on it, and I, I love the idea. So in one of their uh, campuses, it's very remote, they're studying the impact of uh, greenhouse gases on uh, forest, uh, forest life, both vegetation and animals. And so to test this carefully, They've created these zones, and you can see here this radiating uh, lines coming into the forest with little circles at the end of it. And in those circles are test areas. And in each circle, there is a, a construction crane that has got a hose pumping CO2 down into the environment, and IoT sensors are measuring the level of CO2 and measuring different things about the flora and fauna on it. Well, that's all well and good, but they were isolated out there in the, in the middle of the forest. And so they asked the this, this CIO and his team, can you please connect us back to the campus, to each other, to other researchers, and to our data so that we can collaborate, communicate to do our research better. And so use the data we're gathering from um, other researchers on campus in order to be more effective. And that's what they did. So they gathered the data via IoT. In order to deliver that connectivity, they put ruckus APs on, those, on the top of those cranes. They put our outdoor APs on those cranes and backhauled them to campus. And so they do have their smart forest. So it's an example of how they use campus data collected and used for learning. All right, let's talk a little bit about physical safety. Uh, finally, one more app from City Life. This one for safety, the idea here is uh, if you're walking across campus at, in the dark at night um, and you feel uh, that that would be unsafe, you can broadcast to your friends your location and reach out to them and say, you know, find out who is nearby and who would like to walk back to the residence together or walk to the bus stop together. So you can choose a path that is um, uh, not isolated. You can find where your friends are and feel more secure and safe on campus. So that's an app, again, that puts in the students' hands uh, their own safety. In the middle here is an example um, from one of our partners, um, Shred Air, of a, a outdoor light pole that is modular, and this one can actually be deployed with a T301, I believe, in it for outdoor Wi-Fi. You can put um, uh, different lights on it, you could put a speaker, you could put a camera, lots of different options on it, and it's a very interesting, elegant design and can be posted all over campus. Finally, uh, Wi-Fi locks can be deployed um, in any building. Uh, typically, it's in um, residence halls. And we even have a customer um, in, um, I believe, in Utah that has deployed CloudPath to secure with certificates their ATA Abloy Wi-Fi door locks. 
so that um, they can better manage uh, their Wi-Fi door lock deployment. So it's very interesting what's going on right now in physical safety um, and some of the emerging use cases. So just as a reminder, where we've been talking for the last year was elevating the student experience with a home away from home um, experience for them with no hassle access to their um, devices and, uh, and to the internet so they can engage digitally in campus life and have a great experience. What we're saying now is that we can help elevate the student experience with a smart campus where smart living and smart learning is going to help them engage with each other, with their data, with their learning, um, and feel safer and engaged on campus to have a greater student experience. So we're building on what we did last year to enhance it. So that's, that's the big takeaway here. We're not totally changing what we said last year. We're just saying we're building on that story and on that message. So I hope that makes sense to you. So it used to be all about, can I get my device connected? Then it was, can I get my device connected even when everyone else is connected around me anywhere on campus? Now it's, what can I do with that device? What applications and services can I um, take advantage of that now go from you know, a good campus experience to a smart campus experience? That's how I would think about it. Now let me give you an example of a green campus pursuit with building automation. I've talked about building automation before. Um, at Penn State University, one of the largest tier one research universities in the US, um, they had a problem. They were trying to become a green campus. They're, they're still working on it, and they've made a lot of headway on this. Part of that solution was to manage their buildings and control the amount of electricity being used by everything in it. And so they deployed IoT sensors in those buildings, and they were measuring all kinds of things, temperature, pressure, um, uh, electricity use from the plugs, elevator use, you name it. Um, however, they couldn't run that data over their existing wireless network, which was from, not from Ruckus, but from someone else. And they were told by the central IT team, please don't, don't use that network. It's not reliable enough to put your, your building automation data on. As this was a separate group, they said, okay, we'll create our own network. And so to address the challenges that they were seeing, um, in particular, their IoT sensors were using something called the BACnet protocol. It's a very chatty UDP-based protocol, similar to uh, Apple Bonjour, if you're familiar with that, also a problem in higher ed. They were seeing something like 90,000 packets per hour um, and trying to address broadcast storms that were coming. And whenever they had those broadcast storms of IoT data, uh, buildings randomly would be dropping offline, they'd be running heating and cooling at the same time, uh, temperatures would get too hot, it was unregulated, so they had to find a solution. Ultimately what they found was uh, a need for small layer 3 enabled switches that they could deploy in every building that they could then bring back to uh, you know, a head end in their data center and control building by building. And so they put out an RFP and they said, you know, we only need 12 ports, but we do need layer three support. It needs to be inexpensive. It needs to have low power draw. The only switch they found that met all their needs was the ICX 7150 compact switch. And so they deployed hundreds of them and they're deploying more as we speak. It solved all their problems. And then they deployed the, seven, the, excuse me, the 7750 uh, paired with layer three features at the head end. So they dropped from 90,000 packets down to about 20,000 packets per port. So they're doing much better. They're not having the, the, the network going offline. They're able to manage things much more stably and, and in more usable fashion. So it's very interesting how this works. And if you're wondering why they were getting so many packets, just think if I have an IoT sensor measuring temperature and the temperature changes even 0.1 degree Celsius, I send a packet. If the air pressure changes, one fraction, uh, you know, again, a packet. If I draw another watt of power, another packet, you know, everything they're measuring, every little change is a packet. It's, it adds up to thousands of packets and it does become a, a, a hassle to manage. So this is a great example of a success story for us. We've already written up the case study and just waiting for customer approval. So Think also of your higher ed deployment scenarios. Again, we're not saying to change what you're already doing. 
We go in and we talk about solving the hardest problems in very unique deployment scenarios, such as the residence hall, such as a lecture hall, such as a library, um, such as a stadium. And we still do that. If they have issues with connectivity, reliable connectivity, uh, high capacity, high bandwidth, easy to manage, easy to troubleshoot, we're there. You're there on our, you know, with us, and we're selling that all day, every day. However, if you're not talking to the, just the network engineer or network administrator or the IT director, and you have a chance, maybe it's at an event, maybe it's on a webinar, I don't know, maybe you chanced upon them, but you're speaking to someone like um, uh, the chancellor, like a dean, like a CIO, like a president, um, it's more likely the issue pressing them is how to become a green campus. How do I improve enrollment? How do I improve student retention? And as I mentioned at the very beginning, a smart campus, like a smart city, is one way to attract users or students to a campus and give them that great experience that matches their smart home experience so that they want to stay, right? So you can talk about that with them using the messages I'm providing to you here, right? So you can solve these problems um, with the particular products that we already have in cell, as you're very familiar, right, H510 in a residence hall, and R720, um, uh, in a lecture hall and so on. But now we can talk about new and enhanced student services that build on that infrastructure that solved that immediate headache and set them up for the future of becoming a smart campus. So now I can drop in my, um, my light poles that have the outdoor APs and the cameras or microphones or speakers built into them. Um, I can provide Wi-Fi locks in the residence halls or the MDUs. Um, it can provide smart parking or visibility to, to traffic on campus, and ultimately at some point um, have in-building uh, LTE coverage. So all this stuff um, can be built on the foundation of this fast and reliable wired and wireless networks uh, that we're helping our customers deploy today. Now I know you're familiar with these. I've only put this slide in as a summary so that you have it. I'm sure you're well aware of the products that we offer into higher ed. Each product has its own little set of features that makes it very valuable in a higher ed environment, probably CloudPath the most. I sure hope you're all talking about CloudPath in higher ed. It solves many problems on campuses today, uh, whether it's pre-boarding so that students moving into campus or arriving on campus on day one already have all their devices ready to go uh, the moment they arrive in a range of uh, campus Wi-Fi. No more passwords reduces help desk traffic 20 to 40%. Um, Edge of Rome made easier. I'm sure many of your campuses used Edge of Rome. And CloudPath is the first tool or the first step um, in migrating a campus to Ruckus. So you absolutely want your, camp, your prospective customers to try out CloudPath first. It's also something they probably don't have today and it's easier to get a pilot than it is to talk about switching and, and Wi-Fi. So again, I'm not gonna go over all these in detail. Um, you know, I'm sure you're all very well aware that our access points are some of the best in the world and that they're tailored to the individual situations as I showed you a slide or so ago, H510 for the residence hall and its ability to support IPTV for that matter. We have the best outdoor APs available, the widest range anywhere in higher education that is huge. Much of higher ed needs to be covered with outdoor. It's also a great first sale into higher ed as well. So if they already claim they have everything they need, really poke and ask about their outdoor coverage and how good that is and if they're willing to try something new and better. Another one, and you know, I'm sensitive to this one, as I'm sure you are as well, fewer APs per deployment. When I look at the largest deployments from some of our competitors, um, it agonizes me to see a campus deploy 10,000 access points that aren't as good as ours um, when we can do the same job in perhaps 4,000 access points, significantly far fewer. And so the value prop we have is very, very strong. Uh, you look at Western Sydney University with 2,500 802.11 AC wave two access points uh, deployed for 45,000 students. Comparable universities deployed many times uh, would require to spend much more money and many times more access points with a competitive, with a competing solution. So you have a disruptively better and uh, easier to deploy and less expensive solution for your customers. All powered through Beamflex Plus, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. Okay. So I've told you our story and how it adds on to what you already know and what you already sell and how it's going to enable you to have great conversations, not just with IT directors, but with their bosses and with their bosses' boss, so the heads of the schools, 
the ones who worry not just everyone connected, but who are worrying about enrollment, who are worrying about retention, who are worrying about student health, mental health and stress, looking for solutions for things like that. This is where Smart Campus really helps you get a conversation started. And so we have um, launched our Smart Campus, The Journey Starts Here. It's a scripted webinar that I delivered back in October. Um, it is available for you. If you don't have it, please ask. We can have it made available to you if you can't find it. Um, we have new collateral supporting it, a new ebook, and three solution briefs, one on smart living, one on smart learning, one on smart security. Also available for you to share, read if you like, please, and also share with your prospects. Um, we blogged about this topic and put links to resources back on November 1st. That is on the Ruckus blog. Um, our website has been updated. Our Higher Education Solutions now talks about Smart Campus. We launched all of this um, to our customers, to our prospects, to our partners, to the press back on November 2nd at Educause. And we've now launched uh, a video explainer. So on the Ruckus playlist, I hope you all subscribe to our Ruckus YouTube channel. And on our playlist, you'll see there is a new Smart Campus uh, explainer video, and then it's broken down into component parts, again, to talk about smart learning, um, smart living, and smart security. We're currently working on that case study that I just mentioned, um, planning our end user webinars, and we've started Smart Campus primary research in uh, EMEA, which I'm hoping to have um, in the coming months and share it globally. So this was the webinar on demand, as I mentioned. It's already available now. You can go to our webinar page um, and simply register for it as a webinar on demand. So that's on the ruckus.com website. The collateral, very colorful, very engaging collateral. This was extremely popular at Educause. We ran out. We printed many, but ran out. Um, it is very friendly to the customer to engage and start learning about a smart campus, how to build it, what is it, what are the benefits, et cetera. And then with each topic, to be able to hand them a solution brief that goes a little deeper um, on what those solutions and benefits are and what it takes to deliver for smart learning, smart living, and smart security. Again, if you go to our website, you'll now see that it's echoed there as well. So if you're sending them to our website to learn more, they will feel very familiar and comfortable that they come to the right site because it's talking about the same thing and linking to similar and hopefully new assets as they become available on our website. As I mentioned, I blogged about it. You can send them to the blog. It, this is a handy one um, if you want to share the message in a concise way and put it just as, an, as a link in an email. Um, if you want to uh, put on Twitter or send it as a LinkedIn message and just say, you know, has your campus looked at becoming a smart campus? Ruckus can help you get there. I can help you implement that and plan it. Please take a look and let me know if you have any questions. So this is an easy way to get the conversation started. Now, I mentioned CloudPath before. We've put out a webinar and a, and a best practice white paper on a checklist for vendor migration, how to migrate your campus to Ruckus using a very methodical, phased approach. Um, this is some very good information to share with the campus, regardless, smart campus or not, this is good information to share. The point here is that CloudPath becomes that first step in migrating. If someone says, I really like the, the Ruckus story, I'm very open to trying Ruckus, what's the first thing I need to do beyond working with you and engaging with you? This would be my suggestion, first step. The reasons for that are many. We've had many webinars talking about CloudPath in, in higher ed. What I'll just mention new is that CloudPath now becomes also the first step in becoming a smart campus. So it is that not only is it a handy tool in general, not only is it that first step for vendor migration, but it is the first step in becoming a smart campus as well. So if that question comes up, you're ready to answer it. All right, let me mention quickly about Educause. So we had a very good showing. We had a 20, by, uh, 20 feet by 20 feet booth at Educause right in the middle of the show floor. Our competitors were very jealous, as I knew many of the people working in those competing booths, and they shared that information with me. Um, we had a lot of traffic, as you can see. Um, we came out strong. We showed strong. Our customers appreciated it. You can see the message loud and proud here about elevating the student experience. If you look closely, you see the smart campus language as well. Um, and we had a great showing and lots of great conversations. And you can see I gave an example down below uh, Mojo Networks, a small vendor 
um, trying to get into the space, um, small booth, no one there, and more importantly, they only mention themselves. If you're walking by the Mojo booth, all you see is Mojo, and you don't know what that means. You walk by the Ruckus booth, and it's talking about students. It's talking about experience, and it's, start, it's talking about Smart Campus. It drew people in. And I expect that you'll have a similar experience in your own events and conversations where you're going to draw people in by talking about what they care about and not just yourself or your technology or products. So the response we got was tremendous. We met with uh, a university chair um, from Canada who said the message around Smart Campus really resonated with him. That was important because he's responsible for a group of CIOs across all of Canada responsible for about 90% of higher ed uh, Canadian students. And if he's interested in Smart Campus, that says there's a good chance we're going to get other universities in, in Canada to pay attention to this message as well. Um, one of my favorite conversations was Kurt Weedling, the Director of IS and Digital Services. I don't know if that's a title that you would recognize, but it is relevant here. He's from one of the top five universities in the UK. We had no engagement with this university going in according to SFDC and according to our sales team. He saw the messaging, met with us. I only had five minutes to meet with him between meetings, but he came up and said, he looked at the message, looked at the collateral, and said, I'd like to learn about becoming a smart campus. Would you please have your salesman call me to arrange a meeting? I mean, I can't ask for more. And we did. And I introduced him to our sales manager, Simon Round, and they had their conversation. So this is what we're hoping for. Tell our story. Give our message. See where it resonates. They will come to you and say, if you're saying what you believe, they'll say what they believe. If you believe in the same thing, you will have that conversation, which will lead ultimately to a discussion of what you can do for them what you can deploy and how you would deploy it and what you'd recommend for them. But we don't start there. We start with what they care about. Um, Amy Burroughs from um, EdTech Magazine, one of the press briefings that we had, said, I've heard of Smart Campus, but not from the student viewpoint. And that was really important. She said, this is really a unique message from Ruckus. And I love that validation because I know our competitors are just talking about saving money on electricity and other things. And we can do that too, but we can do so much more and it will help your message and your pitch stand out. And then finally, partners like City Life, who came up to us at the booth, read our message and said, you provide infrastructure for Smart Campus. We provide Smart Campus student solutions. We'd like to find a way to partner with you. And they signed up and they've been onboarded and they're working with our team now on establishing 10 joint pilots across the US. And now we're expanding and trying to engage together in the UK. I'm very excited about this. This is all, whether it's prospective customers, press, partners that are responding to this new message, I think this new message will work for you um, in APAC as well. It's already worked in Australia. I expect it will expand into other areas of APAC as well. I know uh, Sunway University, who we met with uh, last year, Arvin, thank you for that uh, introduction. I talked about Smart Campus, and they're moving in that direction as well. So it's not limited to Australia. So I realize I talk a lot, and sometimes I talk too quickly, so I will stop. And thank you for your time and attention. And Arvin, I want to pass it back, or Zoe, if you're on the line, let me ask if there are any questions that we can answer before we say good yeah. evening. Or Thank you, Richard. I think that was great, um, and, and a lot of great insight from your presentation. We've got a few questions I think I've got on chat privately, so I'm just going to read them out. Um, and if there's anyone else who has any questions, uh, feel free to ask me. So let me start uh, with uh, the first one. Um, the first one was, uh, you know, how do you, how do we how do you find more information on the solutions that uh, City Life provides? Uh, are they planning to be in Asia Pacific or you know expanding their reach? Yeah, I totally understand that that question. Um, so they are now uh, a new Ruckus Ready partner under our solution ecosystem. Um, they are based in the U.S. They're relatively small still. They're relatively new. As I mentioned, they were, um, we met them in Startup Alley, um, and they won that pitch contest to get some um, initial funding. So uh, I don't believe they're ready to expand into APAC just yet, but we're engaging with them because it's already drawing interest from other ecosystem solution partners to do similar things. 
And so I would encourage, um, as you're presenting this information, don't ignore the ecosystem partners at the events that you're going to or who you invite to your events or to your web seminars. Um, they will find you. You get the word out. They will find you, and you'll find the ones that serve your local market. If you'd like help in vetting out those partners, please reach out uh, to Arvin, and Arvin can always get a hold of me, and we'll help you do that and find out if that partner makes sense to engage with. Yeah, that was actually the next question that was on the list. Uh, you know, if there are partners uh, similar to City Life in Asia Pacific, how do we start engaging? I think you've answered that question. So, um, you know, thank you for that. And, and I think, um, you know, send it to me and I will send it to Rich or, you know, if you feel like you need to reach Rich directly. Um, and then we have an ecosystem that, you know, if the partner makes sense and has a wide presence, we could start working with them and, and building an engagement similarly alike in the U.S. Right. Um, the next question was, uh, what marketing activities are being planned to take this message out in, in the Asia Pacific region? Uh, and I'll probably answer that. Uh, you know, we we're, we we participate in a number of major trade shows in Asia Pacific. Um, Rich himself has attended a few of them here in the region. Um, you know, for example, in Japan, we're going to be participating in EDIX, uh, which is the largest education show in uh, Southeast Asia, EduTech in Australia, EduTech in Theta and QuestNet. Um, in Hong Kong, in China, we've been at, at a number of these, um, you know, shows as well. So that's one way we're going to take it out. We're also putting a lot of content and we're running digital campaigns um, and email campaigns to run this. So if you feel like you want to promote this along with uh, promote these messages, um, you can take the existing campaign that we have and add your logo and add your uh, pitch to it and promote it. So the assets are available uh, and you should be able to uh, access it. If you need help accessing those assets, just reach out to uh, mm -hmm. me, and um, you know we can help uh, help write up the campaign for you and and, and uh, send this out from your emails. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the other piece uh, that that we can do. Um, and lastly, you know the best way is you know peer group engagement, uh, and we've seen this. Uh, we've been doing a number of these in in the region. We've been doing small roundtables with a limited set of customers. Uh, we're taking customers from uh, the other, re you know, some of the customers to existing sites, like in China, we took customers to um, a university, and uh, they were able to witness all the, you know, all the technology that the wide and wireless solutions we're providing are powering. So that's another way we could do this as well. So these are the options that we have. If you feel you need to reach out on some of these, uh, reach out to us, and we can help you arrange them as well. So one, one parting thought I want to make here, um, well, we have like another minute or two. Um, it's really important to understand, A, we keep selling what we're selling because no matter what, you're helping those campuses to achieve a better student experience and solving their problems, whether it's uh, reliable connectivity uh, and capacity to support the number of users and devices that they're seeing on campus, especially in the trouble spots like the lecture halls, like the residence halls, the library, et cetera, and outdoors, right? We know we address those problems today. We'll continue to address them, both wired and wireless now. Um, what, we, what we saw is that at Penn State University, they managed to deploy an overlay of switches onto their existing network to solve a, an IoT challenge. So switching is absolutely an important part of your solution set now with uh, with Ruckus Network, in addition to the traditional Wi-Fi that we're always talking about. Um, so we say Smart Campus, it's not just Wi-Fi. It's wired and uh, switching and Wi-Fi. And then Cloud Path for securing the IoT, for migrating the campuses, and for all those other use cases I mentioned is removing password, uh, help desk tickets, uh, pre-boarding to make onboarding run easier, to make Edge of Rome work better. Et cetera. Um, so you've got cloud path, you've got wired, you've got wireless. They're all important in higher education. It's a tremendous, uh, tremendous product portfolio um, that you have at your fingertips to be successful selling into higher ed. And you have the proof points, whether it's Western Sydney or 
Um, some of the other ones that Arvind um, has indicated are, are um, being written up as new wind case studies that you're going to be seeing. All right, Rich, the last question I have was, um, are you planning to, uh, you know, to have a white paper or a video on uh, on the solutions to be presented, and, and will it be available for us to promote um, as well? So the answer to that is an enthusiastic yes. <laughs> Um, now, we decided initially not to write uh, a white paper first, although we could if you determined that that would work better, but this ebook is like a white paper. So it's just easier to read. It has more graphics. It's friendlier to digest, but there's a lot of content. It is lengthy. Um, I would suggest starting with that and let us know if you feel like you need more than that. Again, if you need details on the different solutions, then you have the solution briefs as a follow-up. So you may see the Smart Campus ebook and have questions about physical security, then read the physical security solution brief, and maybe that's enough without having a separate white paper written up. And then finally, we do have the new Smart Campus video explainer. It is recently posted, it is now available on the Ruckus YouTube channel, Higher Education Playlist. Um, so please take a look at that. Um, it's a lot of fun, the graphics, the language, the script, it all matches the other collateral, so it, it, it all makes sense. If you see one, you understand the other. Thank you, Rich. I think that's the that's all the questions we have. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, with that, we will conclude today's call. I'd like to thank everyone again for joining this call. Um, in, in the first one in the series, we start with Smart Campus. It's an initiative that we're going to drive through the year uh, in Asia Pacific. Um, and if you have any questions or comments or uh, need any material, please free, feel free to reach out to both uh, to me or Rich directly, and we should be able to help you with this information. Right. Uh, with that, wishing you a happy new year again, and uh, wish you all the best for the for the rest of the year. Thank you.